Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mikko Vastarantain. I come from University of Eastern Finland. I'm an associate professor there. And now talking about a little bit how to assess tree quality and health using terrestrial point clouds. And so now we are uh, at pretty detailed level all the time. Um, why I'm talking with this kind of topic? Maybe the reason is that during the last 10 years I have been working mainly with Juha Hyppä from Finnish Geodetic Institute or Finnish Geospatial Research Institute nowadays and with Markus Holopainen from University of Helsinki. Uh, and during the last four years, five years, we have also had this kind of center of excellence in laser scanning research. And I would call these, uh, or these guys here, as my scientific family. Uh, at, at the University of Eastern Finland, uh, I have a small research group, two postdocs, and one PhD student. And then I have also a PhD student working at the University of Helsinki, and also one actually in Natural Resources Canada. Uh, Joanne is actually co-operating co with FP Innovations quite a lot with these uh, laser scanning uh, topics as well. Uh, but I just wanted to show you these because by no means I am not doing everything by myself. And then to the real uh, topic of my talk. So I, I think it's always good to start with the basics when we are talking about forest menstruation science. Uh, we are always uh, working, we, we have to do sampling, we have to do measurements, and we have to do some modeling. And we are always playing with the scales. And it's important to understand the scales. Uh, quite often we are measuring single trees, then we are aggregating sample plot level information, and then to really make some operationally important or scientifically in interesting large scale uh, uh, results or applications, we quite often have to do some upscaling. And remote sensing is of course a good tool for that. And actually, all of these measurements, sampling, and modeling are present at all scales. And it's, it's good to realize this path from the detailed tree-level measurements to the global applications. So, what is happening at the moment? Uh, I would say that the new technology is changing uh, the ratios between measurement, sampling, and modeling. We can measure more, uh, we can measure instead of sampling, we can, we can measure instead of modeling. We can also model, uh, do new, new kind of models because we, we have um, so much more detailed measurements. And because we are uh, uh, playing with the scales all the time, we can actually also uh, uh, start to do sampling at totally new levels. Like for a, just, a, just an example, we cannot measure all the leaves or needles in one tree, but maybe we can use sampling to get that information. And these ratios are changing at all scales, tree level, sample plot, or tree community level, and then tree population in, uh, in large RM mapping. Um, so if we really want to understand how forests and trees are functioning, actually quite many important attributes are somehow linked to the tree quality and health. I just listed some, some of the important tree architectural and functional traits that are actually common in plant science. Species, stem form, stem form change, branching architecture, amount of needles, leaf water content, wood density. These are important from ecological perspective, 
and really, really common in other fields of research than, than in forestry. But then, if I compare these to, to the, what kind of information needs we have in forest-based bioeconomy, we need to have information from species, stem form. Pretty much, we have the same, same list. Maybe some of the terms are not the same. Like in forestry, we are, we are not, not interested about the amount of needles. But for example, uh, amount of defoliation is really important. But uh, even, even then, there are many, many same, uh, same traits, same attributes that I had in my previous slide. Uh, and for example, there is also like, we are interested about the growth uh, as tree health and quality are strongly, strongly linked. Like for example, if, if we can monitor growth, it can tell us that the tree uh, forest is growing fast and uh, health, health has a good health status. But then like if, uh, if it's not growing, maybe there is some uh, 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 damaging agents or, or like uh, tree da uh, uh, snow damages or wind damages. And even, even the height of the trees has been uh, <laughs> dropped. And quite often uh, in, in bioeconomy, we have to upscale from branch to tree level and tree from tree level to larger levels and then from that uh, going, going beyond. So when we have been investigating these tree health and quality indicators, what has been our main technology? I would say that during the last or in our recent studies, we have been mainly using multi-temporal and multi-spectral laser scan. And I would say that this is at the moment at least one of the best technologies to really improve the ecological understanding. Because uh, we, we can get so, so detailed measurements from the single trees, we know that uh, the coverage uh, that we can obtain by using this kind of devices, it, it, it is limited. But most probably, like, because of that, we are also working with the other data acquisition platforms, uh, upscaling techniques and data fusion, that we, we, know, we know the path and we acknowledge the path from the tree level to the stand level and larger lots of applications. Uh, in our studies, for example, we, we have been able uh, to explain most of the variation in equivalent leaf water thickness. So basically how much there is water in the needles or in the leaves. And, and we have been do uh, doing this using uh, multispectral tertial point uh, tertial laser scanning in in a con really controlled laboratory conditions, and actually a little bit by accident, we we also detected and in this kind of co uh, conditions, it was pretty straightforward to separate five tree species from the needles or from the leaves. Uh, but of course. This will be, uh, this kind of techniques you can use at the tree level af after you have solved uh, point cloud classification that you, you basically have to know that the return is coming from the needles or from the leaves. Uh, if, you, if you have multi-temporal point cloud, it is really strong uh, data for revealing changes. Like we used to, we, we were usually, or we have been limited to use only like single diameters. But now, if we have multi-temporal point cloud, we can actually monitor how, how the stem form is changing. And that is, of course, linked to the quality of the tree. From forestry point of view, we have been able to characterize most 
a valuable part of the stem in detail. Detecting single branches, distances between the branches and the angle of the branches. From an ecological point of view, we still have lots of work to do. When we are going closer to the treetop, we cannot detect all, all of the branches and it is getting complicated. Maybe in that we have to use some sampling and, and modeling in our future studies. Uh, just one example uh, from our, one of our new project where we are using all of this new information uh, to really and understand what is happening in the forest. I would say that already we, we have quite good knowledge base uh, how trees are growing and what, what kind of uh, what are stand dynamics. But by building on all the existing knowledge and this new information that we are able to obtain, I think that we can learn so much more from stand dynamics uh, by using this information as a starting point uh, in this project. Uh, to conclude, so uh, I would say that from forest, going back to the information needs in forest bioeconomy, I would say that the technology is already there for measuring many interesting attributes uh, related to tree health and tree quality. But then we have to start to think about the how to combine sampling, measurements and modeling in some of the key applications in forest-based bioeconomy. By that we can, we can or, or I would say that researchers cannot do that by themselves. And that needs a collaboration with the companies and organizations who are, who are interested and see the possibilities for added values. Because from a scientific point of view, I think there are so many interesting research questions that can be answered with these new, new data, data sources and technology uh, that the researchers will be, will be just busy with those things if, if, the, uh, if, if, if companies or, or you are not pushing us to also uh, create those uh, profitable applications for you. Thank you. So where do you think are the lowest hanging fruits for uh, economical commercial operations? Lowest hanging fruits. The, the cases where you can definitely see that we can easily make uh, economically sound solutions. Mm. Good question. I, I, I luckily, as a researcher, I, researcher, I don't have to have an exact answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but in 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 general, I would say that during the next four or five years, we are starting to use more and more individual tree-based techniques in some of the stands. We have to get rid of the idea that we have to have good quality. Uh, single tr we have to have techniques that is capable of measuring every single tree in Finnish forest. That is not going to happen within the <coughs> next 10 years. But most probably, as we make that shift that we learn to use, let's say, typical area-based information and tree-level information side by side in stands close to clear cutting or final cutting, that is the path to really also get the value from single tree information to improve forest operations and then bring something new from these really uh, new, new ideas from a, a sample plot level, let's say.